Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Daily Word this morning. As always, I'm glad you have chosen to join me for our time together and for our daily conversation through Scripture and what it means for us and how we use it to live our lives. And hopefully, you know, we all just get a little bit of a nugget from what we talk about um, that we can use. And hopefully it's just um, hearing God speak to us in a new kind of way together. And so this morning we are daily word number 784 as we continue our long journey together. So I'm grateful that you can join me, say good morning, offer greetings as you do. Um, there will not be a daily word tomorrow. We are beginning a little bit of a mission for one of our folks. We're going to be building a shed, uh, assembling a metal shed. And so we are beginning at eight o'clock. So there will not be a daily word tomorrow. So join me again on Thursday. And a reminder that on Wednesday night is our final summer Wednesday night. We have a great meal plan. Folks are bringing covered dishes to share. And uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to have a great time as we end the summer together. So join us. We'll begin at six o'clock in and around the shelter um, on the north lawn of the church. So for this morning, I've chosen for our scripture from Romans chapter 12, verse 12 and verse 19. And this is prompted by a couple of conversations that I've had following Sunday morning's worship. And it's this. So then, each of us must give an answer to the great spirit for how we have walked on this earth. So then, let us walk the path of peace in a manner that lifts up and strengthens the heart of each person. So you know that I have um, opportunities in lots of ways to um, serve at the school at Fairlawn. I'm doing announcing and to keep the book and, and I do all kinds of other things as well when they need me to. It's a pleasure to do that. Um, I was at soccer last night. I had to trudge up those steps. I was in a lot of pain. I have to trudge up those steps, but Three kids always greet me there and we have a big conversation about what's going on and who's going to sing. You know, last week I sang the national anthem. Yesterday, Haley sang the national anthem and we were talking about how old I was. And one of the young men said, I said, how old do you think I am? He said, I don't know, really old. <laughs> and then somebody else, um, one of the young ladies guessed that I was 49 which is a nice number, not close, but a nice number. I have the opportunity to do those things and be in conversation with folks and, and you know, to receive that appreciation. And of course, you know, the work that we do at church together, um, as a community of faith together. So Sunday morning, we talked about forgiveness. And in the children's message, I talked about um, what it means to say, I'm sorry. And Oftentimes, as kids especially, we were and are forced to say, I'm sorry. You tell your brother you're sorry. And you probably really didn't mean it. And the kids admitted that they probably really didn't mean that. But they were forced to say it by their parents. And so we had a long conversation about that. And then we talked about forgiveness in church. Sunday after lunch, Dustin and the kids, the boys and Diane and I went to lunch. And we talked about all kinds of stuff. And Dustin said... When he got in the car after lunch, Carter, my oldest grandson, said to him, Is today sorry day, Dad? Like Papa said in church, Dustin said, I said, yep, you're right. And Carter said, yeah, if you be mean to someone, you have to tell them sorry. Wow, this is from an almost six-year-old. And I said, boy, he really listened to what I had to say. And then I got a text from another person um, who didn't quite get what I was meaning when I said something, but then she texted me and said, I got the message okay. I couldn't connect the dots, but thanks for your dig deep work. I got to thinking about those two messages. My conversation at the scores table, it's soccer. Um, when I go to volleyball on Thursday, when I arrive, I'll get some hugs there. The conversations on Sunday morning, the work that we're going to do tomorrow, assembling the shed. People were joking with me on Sunday, Chuck, that I better make sure I take my tape measure so we get everything measured right. 
All of those things are a reminder to me that there is a spiritual dimension to how we walk, where we're going, and what the path means for us. And that we should let Christ lead the way. And it's true for all of us. You know, I want to I want to lead my grandchildren in that kind of way. I want to lead the person who sent me the message and said, thank you for your dig deep work. She's not a young person by any stretch. I want to walk in such a way that she'll continue to say that. I want to, I and you, we should strive for this idea that when we go into a place, we've made a difference. And, you know, it's not just on Sunday morning. It's not just on mission trip. It's not just at children's message, but it's everywhere we go. We have to answer for how we have walked on this earth. So let us walk the path of peace in a manner that lifts up and strengthens the heart of each person. And I think this is such a critical thing for us to do and to be about and to put deep inside of ourselves to know that how we walk, what we do in life, there should always be a spiritual dimension to it. And when we've walked away, have we left peace behind? Last night I got done announcing all the soccer stuff. Five or six people up in the booth with me. I got done, turned off the microphone, and they're so grateful. They thank me, thank me, you do such a great job. I walked out and a person who had not been at soccer looked up and said, oh, they called in the big guns today. <laughs> I t that was a compliment, but it's a reminder, you know, that how we walk in life is spiritual. We should live that way with all that we do. So think about that. I will today as I think about it and we'll think about it together as we live our lives. So as always, thanks for joining me for our time together. Know of God's love that surrounds you. Know of my love for you. I will not see you tomorrow, but I will see you then again on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.